on Larry King Now, Grammy Award-winning singer-songwriter Jason Mraz. When I hear people accusing me of being positive, they, they accuse me in a way that says, well, it can't be real. You can't really be that positive all the time. And they're correct. I'm not positive that all the time. But I've used art and songwriting as an opportunity to transform my sadnesses, my depression, my melancholy into something more positive. You um, feel pressure to make that the next one has to be a hit because the last one was? No, no, I don't. The, to me, the next one just has to sound great. You know, that's, that's my only objective when I'm making an album, is I have to love it and it has to be beautiful. Plus, do you ever, as big as you've gotten, just go into a coffee shop? Oh yeah, I need that in my life. It keeps me real, especially before I'm gonna do a big tour in front of thousands of people. I, I always need to go back and at least do one coffee shop show just to remember, okay, this is, this is really who I am. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. Our special guest is Jason Mraz, the multi-platinum Grammy Award-winning singer-songwriter. His fifth album, Yes, debuted in July. Got it right here. He's currently in the midst of a worldwide tour, a worldwide tour rather, and among his other endeavors, Jason owns, also owns an avocado farm. How did you get into that business? Well, I just wanted to live out in the woods. And uh, when I found this place, it turns out that all the trees were producing avocados. So I kept it going uh, for a while. And then about three years ago, I got even more involved and in, in started transitioning the fruit to organic, which now we're certified organic. Why'd you want to live in the woods? Uh, I like peace. You know, I, as a songwriter, I found that when I sing in a hotel room or when I had an apartment in Los Angeles or anywhere else, I, I wouldn't express myself as loudly or openly because I was nervous about the thin walls. And uh, so something was very compelling about being out in the wilderness where I could be as loud as I wanted to be. Is that a good business, avocado? Uh, yeah, it depends on the year. But more recently, avocados, yeah, the, the demand has gone way up because restaurants all across the U.S. are now putting avocado as a as Because of the topic. health factor as sure. well as guacamole, right? Mm -hmm. Now, is it true that you sell them to Chipotle? It's true. And according to the Huffington Post, Chipotle uses 100,000 avocados every day. I believe it. How many of them do you sell them? Well, we have about two or three harvests each year, uh, uh, every year. So um, at the most, we probably do 32, 35,000 pounds in a year, which isn't a lot. Um, really? So they, they rely on a lot of avocado farmers. I've heard that Chipotle is the largest buyer of avocados in the country. Are all avocados, I'll get to singing in a minute. All right, no problem. Are all avocados the same? They're not. What makes a better avocado? Uh, <laughs> well, I have two varieties on my farm. I have a reed and a, and a haas. Haas is what you normally see in the store. That's your classic 8 to 10 ounce avocado. The reed is a big melon type, and that's my favorite because you get more delicious, buttery, creamy avocado inside. And we use it as a mayonnaise, as a spread, as a, as a cream, as wow. a pudding, etc. You can use it for many things. Tell me about Yes. Okay. That's one of the songs, Yes? Yes is not a song. Um, it's mentioned in a song. Uh, so tell me about the title. Well, uh, the title, uh, I love positive articulation. That's, that's my favorite thing in the world. Um, and I felt Yes is the mother of all positive words. When we say yes, something is going to be born into this world. Um, and then personally, the album came about because I met my collaborators eight years ago. I saw them perform live. They're a band. They're called Raining Jane. Girls. Girls. I said, you're fantastic. Would you ever want to collaborate? They said, yes. And so for eight years, we've we said yes to getting together and writing and making music. Uh, last year, our record label, our managers, they all said yes to the concept of us making a record together. And so we felt yes was an apt title for what we're up to. They're touring with you? They're currently touring with me. So you've been working eight years, but this is your first album together? Yep. What were you doing before that? Well, I was still doing... Uh, Single? Yep, I was still doing my own solo projects, and I would hire a session band for every album, and, and they had their own band, and they've been touring around the country for 15 years. You know, yes can be a word that gets you in trouble. Too, yes, it can. Because it's easier to say yes than hard. No is a hard word to say. Exactly. No is more powerful. Is this your best work yet? This is my best work yet. 
You're not a, you are not a musician, I'm told, for cynics. Does anyone accuse you of being too, too positive? Yes, yeah. Is that a bad rap? No, it's not, um, because, uh, you know, when I hear people accusing me of being positive, they, they accuse me in a way that says, well, it can't be real. You can't really be that positive all the time. And they're correct. I'm not positive about that all the time. But I've used art and songwriting as an opportunity to transform my sadnesses, my depression, my melancholy, into something more positive through positive articulation and through writing these mantras set to music. And what I find important about that is... Um, is the, the result is cheerfulness, and I find cheerfulness to be an achievement because of the work that one has to do to maintain achievement, uh, um, cheerfulness or to um, achieve this cheerfulness. So your work is subjective. Yeah, and it's an optimism, I think, is something also to be celebrated because the amount of optimism that we put into a project determines the success of that project. So are all the songs up songs? Most, yeah. And if like Rise, Love Someone, Hello You Beautiful Thing, Long Drive Everywhere, Best Friend, Quiet, Out of My Hands. Absolutely. Out of My Hands would probably be the one song that takes a, a slight turn um, where it's about um, a friend that decides they're not going to be your friend anymore and life suddenly kind of blows and you find yourself being a bit accusatory. Um, but the resolve in the song is saying, well, maybe sometimes the universe has a, a bigger story and you just have to accept Is that something that. that happened to you? Absolutely. So all of them are personal? Always. You know, I've tried to write fictional tunes <laughs> and, uh, and they just don't fly. How does that work with your collaborators, though? Is it personal to them or you make it personal? It's, it's always personal. Um, the songs come out of conversations. They come out of... Um, lessons that we've learned and and we want to then turn those lessons into stories that we can sing. Wow. What was your first break, first hit? What made it for you? Well, um, I feel like I had several along the way that would that would advance me to different levels throughout the years. Um, my first hit in the mainstream world um, would have been a song called The Remedy in 2002 or 2003. Um, I had been in the coffee shop scene prior to that, and I made an album while in the coffee shop scene, but that song ended up on the radio and, and got There is still a coffee coverage. shop scene? Surprisingly, there are still coffee shop scenes. I thought that went out in the age, you know, with the, rock, with the folk songs. Yeah. Well, I did too. And then I stumbled yeah. upon it in the 90s in San Diego, and San Diego wasn't the only city to have it, as I found out be, by being able to travel to other communities, other coffee shop communities and play my shows there. Um, so they still exist, which is great. And I think, yeah, I I think um, YouTube artists should, should consider that and get out of the computer screen and make sure they spend some time in, in the real world, in the coffee shops. When you're on a world tour, though, how big arenas are you playing? It, it, it can get pretty large. At the moment, we're touring in theaters. I've requested that we play in, in small theaters or performance halls. Up next, Jason sounds off on the music landscape today and the pressure to produce hit singles. Stay with us. It is wow. terrific. Who it's is that chest. kid? I have no idea. I've, well, I've never met him personally, but that I've seen YouTube, him. Right? I've seen him online. Yeah, he got a lot of views. Wow. Yeah. That's your song, I'm he Yours, itchy right? He knows, and he just still just committed to the song. Why don't you find him somewhere? He could be a hit. He could. He, he could. He could tour with you, that kid. He, he could. He could. I, I, he'd be a tough act to follow. This is your first ever acoustic album, right? Yes. Was that all scary for you to lose the bells and the whistles? And no, it, it wasn't, actually. Uh, I'd been looking for ways to, um, to swap out the bells and whistles. And this album has plenty of bells and whistles, but 
I, I was able to choose the instruments that are more near and dear to my heart or more, um, I don't know, more interesting to me than just electric guitars and synthesizers. What kind of singer are you? Wow, what kind of singer am I? Yeah, are you, are you pop? Are you, you're not R&B? You're not, no, you're not a rapper? I mean, yeah, I would say I'm in the pop genre, of course. Um, I grew up, you know, I had amazing music in my public school system, so we sang a lot of classical music. Um, a lot of musicals were in our repertoire. Um, the occasional pop song. I grew up listening to doo-wop music with my dad, and my mom loved the crooners, the you know the Frank Sinatras and the Tony Bennett's, and um, so I always had that. But when I picked up a guitar, you know what comes out for me is is uh, is it's it's I don't know it's pop music. You. It's me. What what music format stations play your music? I have no idea. Um, well, you played on the radio. I uh, think so. Yeah. You think so? How I would you sell so. albums if yeah. you weren't? <laughs> exactly. Um, I think you still need to have a song on the radio to sell a decent amount of records, but I don't think it's required anymore these days. Huffington Post, I want to quote you. You said, I think it's important to earn your fan base and not try to immediately advance to the top. If you ride to the top quickly, you're liable to fall as quickly. Do you see a lot of that in today's music landscape? One hit wonders? Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's always been one hit wonders. Um, and now we have a lot of different ways for people to quickly garner a lot of hits on the web or, or get a lot of fans through television, um, which can be okay for the artist if they're looking for a way to sustain themselves for a short term. But I think it's always important to, to stay connected to your audience if you want to sustain and continue. Does American Idol lend itself to that too? Um, it, it can, you know, I think it really is up to each artist independently, you know, you can go for a ride and have a great time, um, or you can, you can use it as an opportunity to add to your story, knowing that your story is going to be a long one. I'm told you keep your Grammys in a special place. Where do you keep them? Uh, I have a, I have a restroom in my studio that, that's where all the, the awards have ended up. A restroom? A you bathroom? Know, it's a WC. Yeah, it's a water closet for... Why do you do that, Jason? I, I don't know. I, it felt strange to me putting them on the wall where I was making new music. You know, I, I didn't want to feel like I was writing to, to add more awards to the wall. And I certainly didn't want the pressure of needing to write again for that level. Um, so, I don't know, they just started piling up in the bathroom. Do you feel pressure to make that the next one has to be a hit because the last one was? No, no, I don't. The, to me, the next one just has to sound great. You know, that's, that's my only objective when I'm making an album, is I have to love it and it has to be beautiful. That's it. Whether it's going to be successful, that's, that's, that's actually someone else's business. So when you're recording, you don't say this is going to be a hit? No, can't do that. Have hits surprised you? Definitely. I'm yours. Surprised me. Big time. Had no idea it was going to be a hit. And the fact that we just saw a young man playing it on the ukulele is exactly what I thought of it when I wrote it. I said, maybe this is a kid song. Maybe I won't, I'll save this for a kid's album. And I started playing it live. And uh, after a few years of playing it live, I noticed audiences were demanding it. So I put it on an album, and it immediately became a hit. Do you play outside this country? Oh, yeah. Most, I, I play a lot outside of this country. Like where? Uh, a lot in Southeast Asia. I play um, quite a bit in Europe. Um, we, do, we do pretty well down in Brazil. Do well. they understand you? You know, that's the great thing about music is uh, I think even if English isn't your first language, there, there, there can be an intention in music or there can be just a simple melody that, that brings us all together takes us to a higher place. Up next, we're going to talk about a form of bad habit that Jason and I share. We'll be right back. His newest, uh, is this called CD? Is this still called yeah, CD? Yeah, yes. So. His guest, he's Jason Mraz. He's on a world tour. He had a day named for you in San Diego? That's correct. That was strange. Um, well, you live near there, right? I do. I live in San Diego, yeah. So um, last week, we were getting ready to launch our tour. And quite foolishly, I dragged my feet into City Hall because I was on my way to sound check, and my manager said, we're going to go visit the mayor first. I was like, oh, 
I've got sound check to do. We got we've got a show to put on. And I was like a kid being dragged into a bank. I just did not want to be there. And the whole thing blew up in my face, of course, when I walk into the mayor's office and they present me with Jason Mraz Day and there's cameras everywhere. So I was really touched. You started a foundation a few years ago, a vision to achieve a society where all persons are treated equally. Yeah. Sounds utopian. Utopian. Wouldn't that be great? It would be great. Write a song about it. Yeah, I'm trying. Like you see Ferguson. It's hard to be optimistic. Oh. Ferguson, Missouri, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well... Isn't it hard to be optimistic? It is. You know, we live in a place where I, food is behind lock and key. And as long as food is behind lock and key, there's always going to be poverty. There's always going to be war. There's always right. going to be famine, suffering. And so it is hard to be optimistic. How long did you smoke? I smoked for 10 years. From 18 to 28, I smoked cigarettes. I smoked from 17 to 53. Okay. How many cigarettes did you smoke? Uh, I got to about a pack a day. I even worked at a tobacco shop. Pack a day is nothing. I know. That's, well, what are you kidding? Well, you know, ten years is nothing, I guess. When you a heart kidding. attack stopped me. What stopped you? Surfing. Surfing Explain. stopped me. Uh, well, you know, I, I fell in love with the sea. I loved going out in the water, and it seemed strange to me to get, come out of the ocean and, and light up a cigarette. Um, the other thing that really stopped me. This is what really stopped me, Larry. Is I, I loved writing and smoking. I loved having a cigarette, writing, and it just it, it worked for me. It, what stopped me is when I put the cigarette down in the ashtray next to another cigarette that was already lit. Happened to every smoker. That's when I knew I wasn't paying attention anymore. I didn't have a romance with it anymore. I d so I said, if, if I'm not even thinking about it, then I shouldn't think about it anymore. You quit cold. I quit cold. Actually, I read a great book, um, The Easy Way to Stop Smoking by Alan Carr, which is a fantastic... Actually, the most boring book I've ever read. I'll never want to read it again. But it, it worked. It, 80 pages in, a light bulb went off, and I said, I'm never going to smoke again. How crazy is that? Because it, it's not a bad habit. You know, the feel is good. Sure. You know, I think if I had a day to live, I'd smoke. Mm. In my next life, I'm going to come back and do all those things. <laughs> uh, you write a lot about love. Yes. You've been in love a lot? I have. I have enjoyed being in love. Are you married? I'm not married. I have a, I have a, I'm in a great relationship right now where, where, where that's in our conversation. Oh, oh. Yeah. How long has it been going on? About three years. Is she into music? She's not, which is nice. She's into food. Into avocados? Oh, yes, very much. <laughs> Does she help with the avocado farm? Very much, yeah. If you stopped singing, could you just be an avocado farmer? I think so, yeah. But you know what? I'd still have to sneak into the coffee shops and play music. Because I, I do enjoy that. I do enjoy that, yeah. Do you ever, as big as you've gotten, just go into a coffee shop? Oh, yeah, definitely. In fact, some of my local coffee shops in San Diego, they always reserve a little place for me whenever I want to come in and, and play. Which it's like nice. Jay Leno goes to comedy clubs and just gets up and riffs for 20 minutes. I love that, yeah. I need that in my life. It keeps me real, especially before I'm going to do a big tour in front of thousands of people. I, I always need to go back and at least do one coffee shop show just to remember, okay, this is, this is really who I am. Don't let yourself get carried away out there. How does it work with the girls when you're writing a song? That's five people writing a song? Yeah. It can be challenging because just when you think you figured it out, someone comes in with a no or someone comes in with a different idea of what they thought the song was about. And then we have to rethink the whole thing. Um, up until now, um, you know, it's really been my voice in the front. So I've always been able to veto whenever I need to, but but because this was a real collaboration, um, I we we I did allow all voices to be to be heard. Do you enjoy touring? Yes and no. Uh, I do enjoy seeing the world to an extent. Um, I don't necessarily like um, you know going through TSA or three four times a week. You know I don't necessarily like leaving home for three or four months at a time. So I'd love to, to, to still be able to do shows, but, you know, come you home more often. You have people running the avocado business, right? I do. Jason will answer your questions in our final segment, plus a game of If You Only Knew. We'll be right back. We're back with Jason Mraz. His newest is Yes. We have some social media questions for you. Keen Dawson tweets, how do you write a song? Chords first, then lyrics, lyrics, then music, all together, how? 
I prefer all together. If you can get it, if you can capture it all in one moment, that's the best because that's when it's really coming from someplace else. Um, but usually it's chords and music first so that you can have have a foundation to play with your melodies on. Uh, at Stephen Smolik via Twitter, what do you like most about being an avocado farmer? And do you sing to your avocados? Uh, my studio is situated right in the middle of the avocado farm and we have many doors and windows. So the avocados uh, are always getting the vibration of music, which is really nice. Um, what do you like most about it? I, I like most about it is, um, as I said earlier in the interview, I like being out in the wilderness. You know, we have we have really rich wildlife out there. Beautiful birds, bird songs, hawks, owls, skunks, raccoons, coyotes. How big a piece of land? friends. I only have about five and a half acres. So only? Yeah, well, it's pretty big, I would say. At Lexi0707 wants to know what your best avocado recipe is. My best, the one I'm famous for, is my chocomole. So it's... Ch not guacamole. Not guacamole, it's chocomole. What is chocomole? So chocomole is a raw chocolate mousse made entirely of avocados. So you mash them all up and get your pudding base with your avocados. But then instead of going savory, you make it sweet with dates and agave and some uh, coconut oil, perhaps, maybe a little vanilla, and some raw chocolate powder. The entire thing turns chocolatey delicious, and your guests will never know they're eating avocados. It's a dessert. It's a dessert. At Zaoi tweets, I was surprised to find out that you can sing opera. What other talents do you have in your music arsenal? Um, you don't appear to me as an opera singer. No, well, like I said, I had a lot of classical training when I was in high school. Uh, my teacher, uh, Jay Beville, was a phenomenal classical uh, singer. Baritone? Uh, yeah, I think he was about a baritone. Are you a little oh, tenor? Oh, I'm a tenor, yeah, very much. Um, and for me, singing opera on stage is more a parlor trick, just of where I place my voice. And set do you do a little opera in your... Sometimes, if I'm feeling right and the, and the theater is set up for it. You need the right acoustics, right? I need the right acoustics, because then I can, I can throw it up into a soprano range that fools the ear and makes you think I'm doing something fabulous. But uh, It's a trick? It's a trick. Do you enjoy singing opera? I do, I do, I miss it. And in some, some ways I've actually thought, maybe after I get out of the pop game, I'll go back and, and study more classical music. Jason Mraz at the Met. Okay, we like to finish the show with a game called If You Only Knew. I just throw out questions. Great. Remember the first girl you kissed? Uh, not really. Was it in Virginia? It was in Virginia. Were you a little boy? Yes. Childhood celebrity crush? Sandra Bullock. Guilty pleasure you have? Uh, insomnia. You like insomnia? I enjoy it. You're all about yes. What do you say no to? Hmm. Smoking. Uh, yeah, I say definitely no to smoking cigarettes. If you had a superpower, what would it be? Hmm. Um, flying's always a good one, but maybe a um, thousand years of life. Let's do that. I'll take that. Yeah. I'd be, like to be invisible, too. Invisible's cool. But then you could get locked in a room. That'd be weird. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You can't, unless you can go through the door. Yeah. Band or musician your fans would be surprised to know you listen to? I love the Skrillex. Are you into the Skrillex? Never heard yeah, of them. Yeah. City with the loudest fans? Seoul, Korea. I've been there. What a town. Yeah. If you weren't a singer-songwriter except avocados, what would you be? Avocados aside. Um, I might be a landscape architect or a barista. Do you have a life mantra or philosophy? Uh, You're obviously very optimistic. Yeah, you know, my mantras end up in my music, so they're always changing, because I'm always forgetting them, which is why I need to keep writing more. Um, I would say it's... Um, so you don't have to answer, it's not a courtroom. Got it, thanks. <laughs> Do you have down times? Very much, very much. Um, the thing that was going through my head for that last question was how you do anything is how you do everything. And that's been somewhat a, um, a philosophy of mine. And I noticed that if I 
if I drag my feet in one area, I'm probably going to drag my feet in another area. So if I'm if I can step up to the plate in other areas, then I'll probably step up in other areas too. Yeah. Advice to young musicians starting out. Take your time. Take your time. Um, nowadays, I see people writing their f first song online. Like, they will perform their very first song to an audience online. Um, and I think it's important to, um, to work on that first song as much as you can and, and find a home for yourself. Um, know that the music itself is the reward and not some award on your shelf or or the number of likes that you get. You're not your likes. You're the quality of your art. I dig you, Jason. Thanks, man. Thanks, Larry. Jason Mraz, great guest. Yes is available now. You can catch him on tour through November. For ticket information, visit jasonmraz.com backslash tour. And for behind the scenes photos from today, you can find me on Instagram at Larry King Now. And we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.